has to be very loud. I've discovered if you have to be a successful preacher, the sound has to be very loud. Amen. Yes, the sound has to be very loud. Yes, if you have to, aha, you see now, there's a very big difference. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We have sent uh, healing upon uh, Charlene's way and everybody else who is unwell. We have spoken it at this altar. The altar of Jacob, where we send requests and answers come instantly in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So she is well in the name of Jesus Christ. Send our love. Of course, we'll also get in touch after this. We shall let her know that we love her. We care for her. And of course, we treasure her service into this ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Good to see all of you in the house of the Lord after the walk yesterday. We are grateful that you did not decide to stay in, the, in, the, in your beds. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, let us pray. Father, we thank you as we enter the uh, series, the period of uh, teaching your word. I pray that, Lord, give me unction. I pray that the angels of the living God will minister to each one of us who is here. And Jehovah God, let no word fall to the ground in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it saturate the hearts of men that they will be changed, they will be delivered, they will be transformed, and they will live victorious lives in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Today we want to, you can have your seats, me and the worship team, we are singing for you a song. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, clap for this pastor. She was a musician. Hey, you want, I told you I'm writing a book in search of God. I used to be the leader of choir in a church called Jiam. We were the ones who started that church. Hallelujah. Yeah, what we appear in my coffee, we appear in my coffee. Yes, yes. So that's where I started. Uh, we had a very big choir. Hmm? I was the leader of choir. But I've discovered that it is biblical. Amen. Yes. Edwin, don't be cheated. It is biblical. You have to be walking with a spiritual whip and sometimes a physical whip. Yes, for you to get to make impact. Amen. And this is a song you know, but this is a song of what we are talking about the salvation of the Lord. And today I'm teaching about being in salvation in salvation and uh, let me say something even before we we sing for you this melodious song and these are the times you start saying please don't listen to the words to the, vo to the voice just listen to the words this is that time hallelujah amen yes the song we have is powerful it's talking about being in salvation what happens to you you know, I, I ignored for so long. And actually, I thank the Holy Spirit because the one who gives us these topics to teach. We just assumed that everybody knew what it means to be saved. Until you walk the streets of Nairobi and you tell somebody, they say they are born again. Then you tell them, give me a testimony. They start telling me, God, I'm an Elinda. I'm like, no, when you are born again, what do you say? Oh, I'm in health. No, you are born again. What do you say? I tell you. So what we are teaching is because people need to learn to be empowered. Hallelujah. Yes, we can sing. Halabakuya. This time, listen to the voices. Yeah. 
in the soul life. Surrender. You were breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Cause where there is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom, and the King. yesterday in the Saturday walk. Hallelujah. And then of course I'll give you other announcements. Being in salvation. The title of this one is being in salvation. So salvation. Being in salvation. Hallelujah. The Bible says in John 1, 21, 29. Hallelujah. John 1, 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. If you remember the Bible says in Leviticus 4 and verse 15, if you read the whole of Leviticus 4, it's about sin offering. What used to happen when you enter into sin? That you give out your goat and people used to lay hands on the goat so that the goat or the bull or the ram can go inside with your sin. Woe unto you if the sin was too heavy. The elder who was inside the Holy of Holies would not come out. So what used to happen is the holy, the priest who was going inside there had to be tied his, his, uh, his, his leg with a string. So that in case Dambizen unimingi sana, unijua saizi, me I cannot even agree to be a priest saizi. If that was going to happen, in Kenya you'd be dying every day. Yeah? So this time what used to happen is you go inside the Holy of Holies, but a string is tied to you. So if they stay, take some time and they don't find you coming out, they pull you with that string because they cannot enter the Holy of Holies because your sins are too much. So the priest is struck down because of your sin. Hey, Jehovah, we thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. So that is what used to happen that time. But the Bible says that Jesus Christ came, became the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. He takes over your sin offering. You know, uh, your, your sin. And I was remembering and I was thinking that it is a mystery. You know, the kingdom of God and the things of God are a mystery. Praise the name of the Lord. They are a mystery because how is it that Jesus Christ died 2,000 ago, 2,000 years ago for the sin you're committing today? 
Yes, so the things of God, I keep saying, are spiritual. They are not normal. They are not natural. If you keep watching them naturally, you're going to miss the boat. So Jesus Christ died 2,000 years ago because of the sin you're going to, more, to do tomorrow. Until you cannot even understand. It is understandable. You know, Lisa, I'm about Catholic Church last time. It is a mystery. It is a mystery. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, that is what our Italian fathers used to say. It is a what? It is a mystery. The things of God are a mystery. Amen. Yes, yes. Good, Peter. The things of God are a mystery. Hallelujah. Don't worry. I have not forgotten the question we usually ask about what you are taught last Sunday. I'm just making sure that you watch, go through your, your, your notes so that when I ask at the end, you remember. I don't want to embarrass you. Hallelujah. So the death of Jesus Christ was even more painful because, you know, at one time he said, Lord, if it is your will, take this cup from me. Because he could see your sins. You will, anaona. Ten years down the line, you will still be committing sin. So God was looking and saying, Yani, I'm collecting all the sins that these guys are going to, to, to perform. All the things that are anafanya. So Jesus Christ in the garden of Gethsemane almost gave in. The Bible says at one time he said, if it is your will, O oh Lord, take this cup away from me. Take this cup away from me that I'm going to take the burden of all these sins. It was a heavy time. The Bible says that when you read for yourself Matthew 26, 36 to 39, that it was not easy for Jesus Christ to take away your sins. It was not easy. And as I took you through the other time, that the price, the price that Jesus Christ had to pay is a heavy price. So salvation, we are never going to say it is free. It is freely given. But it is not free because somebody paid for your sins. Somebody paid for your sins all those many years ago. Hallelujah. And that's why we say as Christians, we want to make a serious and a loud disclaimer. It is not only Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach who died on the cross. Hallelujah. And after three days, he rose again. Hallelujah. So that I can wake up in his resurrection. Praise the name of the Lord. So any other, any other religion, Jekataramazai. Hallelujah. Unajua atuwa YouTube sikuizi, they close you. Kianza kusama vitu kama hizi. So I want to say right now, it is only Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua Hamashiach, who died and, and was, was buried in the tomb for three days. And after three days, he rose again. Bwana sifuwe sana. Muhammad did not try again. Hallelujah. Yes, what do you call the other guy? Buddha. Kwanza Buddha cannot even help. He cannot even help. Hata better Muhammad was alive. This other guy is just a mufano of something. Yes, just an image. So he cannot help you. Only Jesus Christ can help you. Praise the name of the Lord. So he took our sins. That's why I'm saying this topic of salvation is heavy. This, uh, this topic is good for you. Hallelujah. Today I'm going to remind you why you get born again and then who you become. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, from now on, so it is only Jesus Christ who rose after three days and he appeared to them for 40 days so that they could not say it was not him. Praise the name of the Lord. He appeared. He was like, it is me. Until Thomas said, let me see the hands. There are many Jesuses, eh? But I swear, Sana, he said, Let me see, let me see your hands. And then he saw, and he said, Indeed, the Son of God. Why do I need to get born again? Why do I need to get born again? John 3 and verse 7. These are the instructions of, the, of Jesus Christ, whom you follow. These are the instructions, very clear. Marvel not that I say unto thee, Ye must be born again. It is not, you are not being asked. You must be born again. So it is not like utaulizwa. Uta, ah, 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 ah. The instructions from Jesus Christ are, cre are clear. You must be born again. Believing in him is the only path to eternity. We were taught about the benefits of being uh, saved or being in salvation. Last week, very well by Pastor Kari, and I went just thinking, my God, you mean all these are the things that are supposed to follow me after I believe in Jesus Christ. The Bible says in, first, in John 14 and verse 6, John 14 and verse 6, it says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, praise the Lord, no man, repeat after me, no man cometh after unto the Father but by me. There is no other route. There is no other way. 
except Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Why do I need to be born again? These are the instructions of Jesus Christ. That that is the only way to God. No one comes to the father except through me. Why do I need to get born again? Point number two, you are born a sinner. You are born a sinner. Psalms 51 and verse 5. Psalms 51 and verse 5. You are in the lineage of Adam. The first man who introduced death to the world. You are birthed by that process. You are not birthed through the Holy Spirit. So you cannot come to tell us where when he is. But as for your son. The Bible says, Behold, I was shaped into iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. You are conceived in death. You are already conceived through death. So the fact that you are conceived through a woman, the fact that you are conceived through a woman, you are born a sinner. You are born a sinner. You are in the lineage of sin. So you have to get born again. Why do I need to get born again? In sin and in your natural human nature, you are dead. You are walking dead. You are dead. Bwana siwe sana. Wale wote hawajaokoka. Wajue tu wanatembea mauti. Bwana siwe sana. You know me I used to work in Chiromo. Bwana siwe sana. Bwana siwe sana. And let me tell you even death has a smell. Huko Chiromo hapo juu hapo juu. That place has a particular smell of just death. Yes? So you need to get born again. So you get away from the smell of death. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 1 to 5. I want us to read all this. This the, You need to go back and read Ephesians 2. It talks very about uh, salvation and you being dead and being alive in Christ. Let us go. If you have NLT, I don't want to start shrubbing. July is the month of shrubbing. So let us get a good version. NLT. NLT is good for me. So that it is very good. The Bible says, once you are dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commanders of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who, who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead, you see, you were dead because of your sins. As long as you have not crossed over as a born again Christian, you are dead. You are very dead. There is the death that occurs after you get born again where you are dead to sin. But before you get born again, you are now dead in your sin. So the Bible says, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. So God has given you life when you are now a believer. God has given you life. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. I love that scripture. Please go back to that scripture a lot. It is beautiful. Ephesians 2 is very nice. So the Bible says, you are made alive through Jesus Christ. Why do I need to get, to get born again? Why do I need to get born again? You are made alive through Jesus Christ. You are already walking dead. That's what he's saying, that you are dead in your sins. You are dead in the evil things that you're doing because your commander-in-chief, Buenos Aires, Anna, is the devil himself. Why do I need to get born again? Point number four. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Am I going very fast for you? The first one is that it's an instruction from the Lord for you to get born again. The second one is you are born a sinner. The third one is that in sin and your natural nature, you are dead. Amen? So you need to get alive. You need to be in this world alive. So it means that you can be in this world but dead. So that is, it, that's why I say it is a mis mystery. This things of God is a mystery because you are saying but I'm breathing. How can I be dead? But the Bible is telling you you're already very dead because you are in sin. It's when you cross over to Christ that you become you become alive in the things of God. Why do I need to get born again? When you are not born again, you are unable to submit to God. I know people talk about goodness. That's different. Submission to God is a totally different ballgame. So the Bible says in Romans 8, 7 to 9. Romans 8, 7 to 9. When you are born again, you start submitting. You start submitting. There is nothing like my dress, my choice. My hours, my choice. There is nothing like you become submissive to the authority of the Lord. The Bible says, for the sinful nature is always hostile to God. The sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law and it never will. 
it never did obey God's law and it never will. That that those, okay, we are in verse 8, yes, good. That's, that's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. So as long as you're on the other side, it's okay, you can do everything. You can come and give food, you can give your clothes. My friend, you're still walking dead. What has fear, Sana? You must come to Christ so that those things start counting. So that your book of memory can start being opened. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible says, but you are not controlled by your sinful nature. For you who are born again, you are controlled by the spirit if you have the spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. Do not belong to him at all. Let me give you, I like giving you stories, but they're all true. My father, I thank the Lord that my mother does not know English. Praise Jesus. In case the children take to him to her YouTube to be seeing me preach a man, then it's like, well, oh, look at not to be sana. So my father was not born again. And when my father retired, she was made a, he was made a chairman of independent church. And he was not born again. And we knew he was not born again. Do you know all those things he was doing before are considered for a dead man? Until the day he gave his life to Christ. And he gave his life to Christ on his deathbed. Very wasted things. Now maybe when I go to heaven, I'll find my father and I'll be looking for his crown and I can't find it. But when he was here on earth, he was doing things. Yeah, in fact, he's the one who helped them build that, that church, the independent church in Muruguru. But imagine I was reading this and seeing, there are things you used to do before you got, up, got born again. They are for a dead man. Now, things for a dead man, are they there? Nobody can see things for a dead man. So it is so important to get born again. That's why we are saying, why are we getting born again? Why are you getting born again? When you get born again, you start submitting to God. You start submitting to God. Then the other, the other good reason is why do I need to get born again? We are unable to accept the gospel. So poor who are not born again cannot accept your gospel. They find you making a lot of noise. That's why it's very easy for the church to be closed. It's very easy for the registration of the churches to be closed. It is very easy for, mus for mosques not to be closed. But for the church, they decide, oh, you're making too much noise. You have cashers, you are, you are too loud. Nema is here deciding that you're very loud. You are un they are unable, if you're not born again, you cannot accept the gospel. First Corinthians, hey, I told you. First Corinthians 2.14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. The natural man is unable to receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness. Read with me. For they are foolishness. Isn't it? So let's continue. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually desired. I keep telling you when you are born again, there's a time you start understanding spiritual things. How they are spiritually designed. I know yesterday I was telling somebody about uh, Praise the name of the Lord. The way people went to remove for me some demons of mine that were in Mombasa. Praise Jesus. And then when the person arrived in Mombasa, they told me that those demons had shifted and gone to Lamu. And of course, I was being told to send fear. Praise the name of Jesus. But can you imagine if I had really been a serious Christian? Some of these things, some of those dramas. I would just be telling you, please don't dramatize these things of God. As long as the Spirit of God is in me, I will have, a, I will have the knowledge to know exactly where these demons are. And I'll, even, I'll teach you about how God is going to empower you as a Christian, to demolish those. Someone doesn't have to collect your money to go and take it to Mombasa. Kwanza Aliniwiza 20 thou. I think they were flying. Then they told me, now we have to go to Lamu because the demons have shifted. That's Jehovah, you are Lord. I am having to write that book, In Search of God. Kuna watu alinikula sana. In Search of God. Yes, now I am, I am brighter now. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Karu, for teaching us to have wisdom. Because even as a Christian, we need wisdom so that you're not going to be gone in your mind. Can you imagine even that one God collected it as zero? And then I send that guy a lot of money. So wherever the, where I go to God and I say, ah, but I've been giving God and God is looking and thinking, I, how, what, where? Amen? Hey, Jehovah, you are Lord. First Corinthians 2.14 But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit. So there are things when you're born again and somebody is not born again, you will say them and they'll be looking at you like, what are you saying? What You need to do this. Why do I need to do this? But you know, when you are a child of God, when you're born again, my friend, you will be moving like, like Abraham. Amen? So I've told you we are unable to accept the gospel of God as long as we are not born again. Why do I need to get born again? Hallelujah. 
as long as you are not born again, you are unable to embrace Christ as Lord. As long as, it doesn't matter. So when you meet people today, please reconfirm with them if they are born again. Reconfirm and ask them, are you, are you sure you are born again? Because you cannot be resisting Jesus Christ and you are born again. I, this born again of yours is which one? Praise the name of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 3. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking of the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a cast. Amen. No man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus. Why women Risha KJV? Calleth Jesus a cast. You know, I know Tracy will just keep laughing at me. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. So you are not able to embrace Jesus Christ as long as you're not born again. So it is so important. It is one thing to have in the benefits, but it is so important to know that you will be walking a life of problems and tragedy and lack and just difficulties as long as you do not have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So I've given you very many points about why do I need to get born again. The next time somebody asks you, tell them, my friend, I have got six points. You are ready here. One, it is an instruction from Jesus Christ. Second one, you were born a sinner. Okay. Third one, in sin, in your in your natural human nature, you are dead. I am not dead. I'm alive. Tell them you are dead. And then give them a scripture. See, have you any scriptures? Tell them you are dead. You are walking very dead. Yeah. So you are walking dead alive, and then you'll walk dead when you are dead. Praise the name of Jesus. That is it. Eh? That is called powerful now profound, hallelujah, that right now you're walking dead, then you die into the death, the second death so it means that from the time you are born to the time you die, you are dead and then when you enter there, you are dead hey my friend, let's get, let's spread this gospel, let people get born again yes, let people get born again because I tell you, it is not easy amen, then we say it in your sin we say it again, you are unable to submit to God again, you are unable to accept this gospel and you are unable to embrace Jesus Christ as Lord. Give us John, give us John 6, 37, and then we read verse 44 and verse 65, just to emphasize that you're not able to embrace Jesus Christ as long as you're not born again. However, those who the Father has given me will come to me, and I will never reject him. And then verse 44, for no one can come to me unless the Father who has sent them sent, sent me draws them to me. And at the last day, I will raise them up. At the last day. So you cannot embrace Jesus Christ until you come to him, get him born again. Because you are being given a promise here. On the last day, I will raise you up because you are drawn to me. Salvation is not by coercion. Salvation is not by coercion. A salvation is not forced. God is a gentleman. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He will not force you. He will keep waiting. He will keep knocking. He will keep knocking. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. So God is not going to force you. God is only going to send you, send you messengers again and again, send you the word of God, send you the miracles, the testimonies, but he is never going to force himself on you. God is not going to force himself on you. Are we together? Are we together? Are you still here? Are you still here? As I studied the word of God, I saw something very profound about salvation. 1 Corinthians 7, 12 to 14. I didn't give that scripture to somebody. Get it for me. 1 Corinthians 7, 12 to 14. Because the Bible says, for you, because of you who is saved, because of you, your family is highly favored. And your family is saved and shall be saved because of you. This, this scripture, this one, I think, I'll, you know, I was told by the Lord to have a seminar for married women. I think I'll start with this one. Buenas Spirit Sana. The Bible says, now I'll speak to the rest of you, though I do not have a direct command from the Lord. If a Christian man has a wife who is not a believer and she's willing to continue living with him, he must not leave her. And if a Christian woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to continue living with her, she must not leave him. Then it goes, for the Christian wife brings holiness to her marriage and the Christian husband brings holiness to his marriage. Otherwise, your children will not be holy, but now they are holy. I don't know if you tried NIV, try NIV on NLT. Is this NLT? Uh, give me NIV if you have that. Give me NIV if you have that. Uh, 
give me verse 13. Let's see that verse 13. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife. Praise Jesus, wives. Wives, wives. Eh? Praise Jesus. This is your message here. For the unbelieving husband is done what? Sanctified by the believing wife. And then the unbelieving wife, Bwana, every husband, Bwana Sana. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And their believing wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean. But as it is, they are holy. Hesh. Na kwambia yoni I had to read it again. That because of you, your children are considered holy. So being a believer, be, it means that you stand. You stand in the place of very many people around you. So don't take your salvation for granted. You are a powerful person. You are standing in the stead of many who are unborn, who are not born again. I want us to at this point to pray for our, for those we know are not born again in our families. And so again, I want to give you one minute. Father, we thank you. Because as this word continues coming to us, Lord, Jehovah, we are praying that none of our family members will go to hell. None of our family members will not make it to heaven. Jehovah God, they will believe, they will become believers. They will walk in salvation. They will walk in your ways in the name of Jesus Christ. We are now collecting them from the pits of hell that they may become believers. They may embrace Jesus Christ. They may embrace the work of God in the name of Jesus Christ. They will accept the gospel of Jesus Christ in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are calling them into salvation. We are calling them from the north. We are calling them from the south. We are calling them from the west. We are calling them from the east in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you have their, their names, mention their names in the name of Jesus Christ. And near where I'm, I'm at this point mentioning my brother, Martin Matu. And I'm calling you to salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray they will get to know Christ because of that prayer that you're making for them. What must I do to be born again? What must I do to be born again? The Bible says in John 3, 1 to 6, the story of Nicodemus. Nicodemus, I even wrote and said Nico. Nicodemus was a tax collector, isn't it? So he was a powerful guy. But now he could see what Jesus Christ was doing. So he decided to come at night in the, in fact, the Bible says in the evening hours, in the evening hours to come and find out this power that is around this Jesus, what can happen? And the Bible says that when he came to him, Jesus told him, except a man, except, yes, give me verse 3. Yeah? Jesus said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This simply means that the physical birth of a man that can only bring carnal living, what we, we saw before, it can only bring birth wickedness, can only birth earthly desires. This body cannot take you to heaven. You need to be born again. You need to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You need to declare it. You need to say it. So you can be walking in the ways of the Lord. So that it is more of the Lord and less of you. More of the Lord and less of you. What must I do to be born again? What must I do to be born again? So this is the way this, this question is answered. That's why Jesus was, sell, was telling him, except a man be born again. He can never see the kingdom of God. First John 1, 8 to 10. You must accept that you are a sinner. You must accept that you are a sinner. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living the truth. Yes, continue. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we say we have no sin, we are making God a liar. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. So the first thing is you must accept that you are a sinner. You must do what? Accept that you are a sinner. Then after that you believe in the death and the resurrection. This is where the mystery is. You must believe in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Romans 10 and verse 9. Romans 10 and verse 9. You must believe 
you must believe. You know, the walk of a Christian is the walk of faith. Because after all, you have never seen God. You have never seen him. So you're walking in faith. And that's what I'm saying. It is a mystery. In this Christian world, if you want to come and see things in the physical, you will get very disappointed. The Bible says that if thou confess with thy mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be, thou shalt be saved. So you must believe in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ for you to be born again. The same verse the Romans 10 verse 9. You must declare with your mouth the lordship of Jesus Christ. Thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. You must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So please don't come and tell me here that you are born again inside your heart. Praise Jesus Christ. There is nothing like that in the scriptures. Bwana asifu ya sana. Isile ya kuomba kimoyo moyo. Salvation is loud. You must let every, even the rat know in your house, I am born again. Nimeokoka yesu ni buwana. And I know I am going to heaven. I am an ambassador who is going to heaven. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Matthew 10 and verse 33. Verse, Matthew 10 and verse 33. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him also I will deny before my father which is in heaven. So continue. When you get to heaven, you get very you will get the shock of your life when you're being told, go on this side. And you'll be saying, Lord, I performed miracles. The Lord will say, but you did not declare that I am Lord and Savior of your life. So you're being told when you go to heaven, Jesus is saying, I will deny you before men. Him I will say, the Bible says, but whosoever shall deny me before men, him I will deny him before my father. Because you are living before men. Some of you, you come to your offices, you are not born again there. Praise the name of Jesus. Eh, uka mja okoka. Eh, ukienda uko useme mimi ni pastor, mutu anajificha. Eh, I go there and say, I want to see Gloria. Say, what do you, I am Pastor Helen. And we, who? Gloria? Jesus? Are you sure? Hmm. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, good to see Christian is back. I'm a choker. So you need to declare. Everybody needs to, to know that you're born again. One time, I was told, and I think one time my, my sister told that story, that in their village, uh, somebody uh, from an NGO came to a particular village in their place in Kitty and said they want to bless people with, with tanks. They want to bless people with tanks. But they want to take these tanks to us to a home of somebody who is born again so that this person can be distributing because this person will be a person of integrity. This little boy who was met, the mother was supposedly saved. But this boy did not take those people to their mother. The boy told the, these people, come I take you where Najua Mtu Ameokoka. And this person took, this boy took the, the, this, this, this and you to an, another person's home. Then when he was, was asked, but kwanini uku wapeleka kwetu? Kusama, mi mama yangu anasema ameokoka, lakini mi siyonai kama ameokoka. Zile vitu anafanya kwa nyumba, sioni kama ameokoka. A child is already declaring you're not born again. Yeah? So you need to declare it and start walking like a saved person. So that now the next time an NGO passes by, others, your own child, you'll take them away to the neighbor. So do not allow God to deny you Siku ya Kiyama. And I tell you, Siku ya Kiyama, it's on the way. It is on the way. Praise the name of the Lord. It is no longer a mystery. We are seeing it coming very near. After salvation, you will submit yourself to the potter. Up and you inakuwa rashida. When you hear people saying, kwe tu sisi tunakuwa watu, tu akukasirika. But mimi ni meokoka. Mana asifia sana. Edwin, there is nothing like that. You submit yourself after you get born again to the potter. You give yourself, you say, Lord, that's why I told you that about that song. You give yourself and say, you know what, Lord? Put new wine in me. Remove all this oldness in me. All these things I used to do. We used to have a small song. I know um, I know that uh, this one, Nani would not know. This young people generation. I love the Lord about the 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 age, the mean age of these people. It is very long. Some things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. Some things I used to do, 
You see, Nashon is not singing. I do it. Things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. I am. Uh -huh. Look for that song. Cindy. Yes. Some places I used to go, I don't go there anymore. Some places I used to go, I don't go there anymore. So, some things I used to do, I no longer. Some places I used to, do, to go, I do not. So if I find you in the darkness somewhere, Chris, praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Some things I used to do, I must stop doing. Some places I used to go, I must stop going. Amen. Because how else will they know that there is a change that has come upon you? You are the pot. You are the clay. God is the potter. Romans 9.21 Has not the potter power over the clay? You submit yourself to God. You become the clay. You become the clay. You need to go and read Jeremiah 18, 5 to 6. But let's read Romans 9, 21. Has not the potter power over the clay of the same lamp to make one vessel and to honor and another and to dishonor? For me, I chose to collect honor. Amen. So become the clay that God wants to make into an honorable person. So you need to know that Christianity is changed. Don't start telling me, Mimi kwa zangoja niweke Yesu hapa, kwanza ni chapane na uyu mutu. I love him, chukwe ba die to endele. Amen? The things we seek as Christians, but God is good and God is faithful and God cares for us. Jeremiah 18, 5 to 6. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. Once you get born again, you release yourself to God to use you. You release yourself to God to mold you. You release yourself to God to direct you. That is where I usually have a problem. Because I get born again, let me give you a testimony. Praise the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, kuwa pastor ni kitu ngumu sana. Tukako sana na mutu. Praise Jesus. Mimi ni kamblok. Nika sema tafadhali. You will not, I'll not entertain you in my space. Yes? Because when you meni kosea, so I'll not allow this conversation to go on. So ni kamblok. Then I've been praying, I've been praying for things. I've been praying for things, doors to open. I've been praying, I've been praying. And then, you know, my spiritual mother calls me. Muli kosa na nanani. Nikambia, by the way, we omutu ndi alini kosea. Sio mimi nilim kosea. That's why, nilim blow. Muli fanya na je. Akanimbea, wewe urudi utubu. Ah, Jesus. I'm telling you this Christianity is a mystery. It's a mystery, Shiro. It is mystery. Because I was trying to explain to her. I said, no, but she's the one alinifanyi IBCD. Sama, your door is closed because she's standing at the door. I said, ah, ah, Jesus. Anyway, I still took a day. I said, lakini Jesus. Come, let us reason together. Si uyu mutu ndi alinifanyi hivi, na mimi nilinifanyi hivi, na mimi nilinifanyi uzuri. Na ye, akanifanyi hivi, 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 hivi. Anyway, Holy Spirit, there's a time he keeps quiet. Anakuambia, sasa zini makuambia? Utu? Utubu. Anyway, the following day I had to unblock the person and I wrote a very long apology. Praise Jesus. I tell you Christianity is a mystery. When you give yourself as a lamp of clay to Jehovah, he will, wewe ndi umekosewa na buwana wako. Anakwambia, enda utubu. Enda ufanya nini? Utubu. Let me tell you, the book of Genesis, when Hegai alikuwa umekosewa na Sara, isn't it? Akakosewa na Sara because sasa, uh, Ishmael amezaliwa. Ishmael has been born. So what happens? The, the, see the lady now has a child. Now Sarah una mtoto. So the lady is one who is showing off to Sarah. Sarah, me I have a child. You do not have a child. Then Sarah decided to chase away Hegai. Hegai was told go back. So the things of God is a mystery. So tafadhali, you have to be always listening to the Holy Spirit. When you nanza kukasirika, say Holy Spirit, please direct me. What do I do? Because now it means I've really closed my doors for so long, getting annoyed at this person. Now deciding, kwa zanikuwa nasema, mungu tukifika binguni, kwa zata ya meokoka. Umweke the other corner, na mi nikae the other corner.
corner. Praise the name of Jesus. You are the only ones who don't do those kind of things. Me, I do them. Geographically, um, work the other side. I don't have to see the person. But you know, there is nothing like that. This heaven where you're going, we shall all be together. So if you have taken offense over me or over somebody else, even in your family, please go back and repent. That is the mystery of the things of God. Heaven, you can write. You have all the rights. Eh? But as we say, even us who drive cars, who have rights, praise the name of the Lord. But as we say, what we are Zima ye and Yalini Kata, Atajua mini nan, Tukutana Palembele. Eh, eh. Let me tell you, there is nothing like that. Praise the name of Jesus. There is nothing like that. As a Christian, you have given yourself to Christ to mold you. He will be telling you, no. Apologize to that person. Lakini Amen Kata, apologize. You. <laughs> There is something one time I told the Lord. I told the Lord, please never come when I'm driving. Because if you come when I'm driving, honestly, I'm going to hell. Because from the time you start driving, wa Kenya, wanakukata, wanakwendea pandei, they do this. Ay. Sindio, we have rights. Let me tell you, I have bad news for you. You don't have a right. Once you become a believer, you give your rights to the porter. The porter starts molding you. Deciding utapitia wapi, utafanya nini, who will you repent to? Bana sfe sana. So please know, you do not have what? You don't have rights. Your rights are gone. So Peter, your rights are gone. Uh, your rights are gone. The Bible is telling us here, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hands, so are you in my hand. O house of Israel, you are in God's hand. Your life is no longer your own. You hear the voice of the shepherd telling you, this is the way to go. And you go in that way. The Bible says about Abraham. And I love talking about and praying to about haste. haste. Because most of us Christians, I tell you Kwanzaa and Pentecostals, eh? if the Lord tells me to do something, I'll pray, I'll fast, I'll call Tanu. I'll call Farida. I'll decide next week we fast on Friday. We, we shall wear the sackcloth on Saturday. Then on Sunday we'll come to church. We shall still be waiting for the voice of the Lord. But let me tell you, some of us will go to, we, when we go to heaven, the Lord will first of all put us on the side. Say, I sent you. You, you had to first of all consult. You had to have a consultative meeting. When Abraham was told that take your child, your only child, and go and sacrifice, the Bible says the following morning, I could consult Bibiake. You see, if, if Abraham was, if I was Sarah, I would just have told the, where God got us another child. Atatupatia mungine kwa ze wachana na uyu. This one we are seeing, this Isaac is not going anywhere. So, there are things that the Lord has spoken to very many of you. But most of you are still consulting. You are still sitting, consulting. Until the prophet declares, until pastor says, mimi siendi, wewe, musishikane na mimi. If the Lord has told you, you do it. You do it. I've told you, you are the clay. The Lord has already told you to go. Follow what the Lord is saying. And I've told you, you no longer have what? You no longer have what? All your rights are finished. The moment you get born again. The moment you come and say, uh, my father, I am a sinner. Forgive me, oh, oh, my friend. Your rights are gone. At Akuna, my clothes, my choice. Praise the name of the Lord. There is nothing like my clothes, my choice in the kingdom of God. As women, you're called to be decent. Amen? Even as men. Nowadays, I hear men are also indecent. Praise the name of Jesus. Hey, I tell you, the Lord is, I tell you, God is coming soon. Edwin, imekuwa kali. That even men can be told they can be indecent. I have born as for sana. The Bible says in John 5, 19. I tell you the truth, the son. This one is where I'm telling you that you have to listen to the voice of the Lord. I tell you the truth. The son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing. Whatever the father does, the son also does. Now we are following the son. So whatever the son does is what we are also supposed to do. Whatever the son is doing, we are also supposed to do. Amen? So this is going to become your mantra. That whatever Lord you want me to do, I will also do. Whatever Jesus Christ you want me to do, I will do. Whatever you want me to be is what I'm going to become. Becoming, becoming, becoming what God wants you to be. Because today I don't take you to take very long. I'll make sure that I go to one point of who do you become. The next week I'll continue. 
Who are you becoming? Who do you become when you are born again? 2 Corinthians 5.20 2 Corinthians 5.20 You become an ambassador for Christ. The Bible says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. You are an ambassador. You start representing heaven. You start speaking the language of heaven. And the language of heaven is, I am successful. I am blessed. I am powerful. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So that is who you become. When you are an ambassador, who are you? You are a high-ranking diplomat who represents a state. You are a high-ranking diplomat. As a what? As an ambassador of Jesus Christ. You no longer represent your views. Your views are no longer important. See, I was made to know that now. My views were no longer important. I'm an envoy. When you become an envoy of Qatar, and you are sent from Kenya. When you go there, you speak the language of the president. You cannot be found there saying, Ati unapinga BBI. We shall return you here very, very fast. Praise the name of the Lord. We shall return you with speed. Next charter. We shall charter for you a flight back. Yes. Yes. You cannot be. Once you are there, the president stands and says, We have BBI. What do you start saying there? We start saying we have handshake. What do you start saying there? Exactly. Now the problem with us Christians, praise the name of the Lord, look at your neighbor. The problem with most of us, we also have our own constitution. We have our constitution. There's nothing like that. As an ambassador of Jesus Christ, a high-ranking, a high-ranking diplomat, you no longer represent yourself. You become an ambassador that only speaks the language of Jehovah. Before you speak, you consult the nation. Praise the name of the Lord Moses. And I pray that one day you become a diplomat. Because you know when you're there, you go and then when you're discussing the diplomacy of Kenya, isn't it? Yes, when you're a diplomat, you consult the heaven. You say, what is heaven speaking about this, ma this matter? What is heaven saying about BBI? You know, you, what, what is it? So don't go with the waves. You are, you are ready now. You, you, you may cross Pandey. You cannot be having a discussion that they are having. You, you will tell them. You know something that uh, uh, Pastor Tanu told me yesterday? That in our workplace, Anakuja Anakua consulted. Esh! What is heaven saying over this matter? Esh! Eh? Yes! If people need to start consulting and asking, what is heaven saying over this matter? Imagine me, they've never consulted me. Hey, Jehovah, from today, my father, my father, Jehovah, change me so that they can start consulting me, isn't it? Yes. You know, once they start seeing that there's something you are saying, something different, they'll say, the Bible says that this, there came a time then that Ahab was starting to say, where is this guy, this troubler of Israel? Because in famine is a lot here. You guys go and look for that guy. Because that guy is having a line from heaven, he will tell you what heaven is saying. So when was the last time somebody ever called you to ask what heaven is saying? Now we talk, we talk about 1973. Eh? I don't know the time, the hour, the hour. But no, you could not want us, Mamma, and I said, Mammy, me, me, you can I think seventy three Sasita, dear Mungu, I could turn an army. But when was the last time you were consulted by others because of heaven? They are telling you, What is heaven saying now? What is heaven saying about next year's elections? Instead, all of us are already either Tanga or Kia. Praise the name of the Lord. But has the Lord told you that? Have you even consulted Him? Or instead, we are consulting newspapers, BBC. CNN, what are they saying? IBC. Become the diplomat that everybody will be like. If you want to know what heaven is saying, call Farida. She will tell you what heaven is saying. Yes, let us start saying that about you because you are born again. Who are you becoming? As I close, I have very many points, but I need to go with them very slowly. This one is First Peter 2 9. Who knows what it says? First Peter 2 9. And remember, the constitution of Jesus Christ is what? The word of God. So, can you imagine people are coming to inquire of you from about your constitution and you don't know? Who has been watching the BBI appeal? 
Have you been seeing those uh, lawyers? According to, uh huh, mm hmm, Cindy, according to, hmm, section, hmm, fa, hmm, eh, kuna mingine I've seen is called Anga Isaac. What is his name? Kuna I don't want to speak it the long, the wrong uh, English word. I took him, and he's called Isaac. He has a very funny name. The arbitrator. Eish, unaskia pastor kari wanamjua. That man came. See now, see where they are consulting. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. I am not pointing fingers, but it is also good to know what is going on. But this man stood and could hear him. According to this section, this anger, hey, this anger, this phrase, this section, this paragraph. Hey, by the following day, I saw Twitter, Isaac, that name. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, Isaac, that name. I said, who is this? So I went to, to search. A guy stood there and he gave them. He told them the reasons why this thing cannot go on. With a reason. So consult your constitution many times. So that when you come here, you say, ah, ah, you are being told so you should do what? Go and get married to a Muslim. Ah, 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 ah. We are not supposed to be yoked with Anbi. But if you don't know what will happen, you then you'll be wasting a lot of heavenly data. You have bundles in heaven, eh? Heavenly bundles. To now waste heavenly bundles, kukuombea. And you are the one who entered because you did not know what the constitution says about you. So the constitution. Learn to consult the constitution. First Peter 2, 9, the Bible says, but you're not like that. You are a? A, a royal? A holy? A peculiar? Good. That's who you are. I am, cl I am closing as I tell you about who you are here. So I have just given you two points. I'll give you the others next week. I have a lot of... Hey, Jehovah has been downloading on this particular topic and I am grateful. You are a peculiar person. It means you cannot be deceived by the world. You are a mysterious person. People are eating and you're saying you're fasting. Okay? People are sleeping and you're awake. People are going this way and on heaven's mountains. Kuomba. So you are peculiar. Unaenda function and you are the Lord has already called you to fast. When everybody amejaza sahani chicken kila kitu yoye unachukua maji. They like you na yeye because you are a peculiar person. You are somebody difficult to decipher. You are a royal priesthood. The time that the curtain was broken, you all became priests. You are a priesthood. You are a royal priesthood. So a royal priesthood you know, I like listening to Pastor Karu. In our family, we call him the Kwani people. He, him and Beth. Cindy mm. or Tracy? Yes, because they know English, they know about, uh, they know a lot of things about things. Mimi, you know, I came from Uruguru and landed here. Praise the name of the Lord. So some things, I don't know how the things, I have learned them. Amen? And it's good to have somebody who can also teach you. Praise the name of the Lord. And he was telling me about royalty. And I told him that every time I preach, I first of all preach to him. So he hears it three times. He hears it when I teach him. And then he hears it here. And then I make him listen to it on YouTube. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, you know it is good so that you gauge whether you're telling people the right thing. So he was teaching me and telling me that you see Akina, William and Harry, they are taught from a very young age how to be royalty. So we need to understand who you are. There are things you don't do. There are places you don't go. There's a way you don't sit. There's a, you know, you do not, like, like now in royalty, they say like the queen has to stretch her hand before you go stretching and hugging the queen. What has face on? Sisi tunangukiaga tu. Eish! But now mimi nimekua, I'll say, andakua royalty wa heaven. Royalty from heaven. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are called into holiness as the nation of God. You are called into holiness. You are God's own possession. God is proud of you. God is, is in that verse of the clay saying, O oh house of Israel, won't I do with you what I want? And then the other one said, I'll give you honor. The people who are being made dishonored are those who do not want to walk in the constitution of the Lord. But as for you who are walking in the ways of the Lord, the Lord will, will, will create you and mold you to be a vessel of honor. So today I want you to look at yourself. I want you to think, has 
my life changed? Whom have I become from the time I declared? From the time the world knew I am born again. From the time it was written, oh, you know, we like writing in our status, now I'm born again. Now I'm saying, but what has happened in your life? Have you changed? Have you become a good ambassador? Have you become a peculiar person? Have you become a holy nation? Are you a royal priesthood? Who have you become? Like I've told you, your life is no longer your own. Your life now belongs to Jesus Christ. He is the one to tell you, go in this way, and you go. He is the one to tell you, stand here, and you stand. He is the one to direct your path. And let me tell you, you will not always be a very popular person as long as you're born again. I told you why. There are people who are not going to embrace Jesus Christ as long as they're on the other side. They are going to look at you and wonder, who are you? What are you doing? What, is, what are these dramas you do all the time? So, rethink where you have walked wrong and tell the Lord, you know, from now on, Lord, make me an ambassador. And from now on, Lord, I will represent you ably. When I was growing up, I always thought the way I was going to be an ambassador. But I didn't know positions in a Bayanagua. When I was So, I knew one day. Hallelujah. Now I'm already an ambassador of Jesus Christ. I go preach this gospel in this country and out of this country. Nani kitoka ntakwa na ambiati. I'm ambassador Helen. Which ambassador? I am ambassador Helen. Heavenly ambassador in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what you're supposed to declare for yourself. I'm a heavenly ambassador. Yes. I represent the kingdom of Jehovah. Amen. 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 Have you been blessed? We shall continue next week about who we are becoming as children of the Most High God. Whom we are becoming. And I've reminded you, your life doesn't belong to you. Yeah. So the next time, mutu akikushautia when you are driving, God bless you. Bwana siwe sana. That's what you shall be saying now. Mungu akubariki sana. And let me tell, let me give you a testimony. Because I used to get so angry. And you when you are alone, you speak all the words you can in that car. Uyo mutu kama naeza jua ile majina ulikuwa na muita. So now, one time I was with her kina Nathaniel, and I said those words. Because my mom, so I was like, oh my God. So now, I told the Lord, now God closed my mouth. Because in this Kenya, you know, he said I usually speak in tongues. When somebody now does me wrong, I swallow. Because I can assure you, drivers, but from today, I think we have changed. Amen? We have changed. We are saying now, we are no longer following ourselves. We are following the constitution of Jesus Christ. So we know that from today, we shall be a different person in the name of Jesus Christ. So there comes an end to our topic today of salvation in salvation. Salvation in salvation. Yes, hallelujah. Nimefunga. Amen. 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 Yay, 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 yay. Oh my, hallelujah. We want to thank the Lord for all of you. We want to thank the Lord because I hope we are, we are growing together, learning together, growing together, being transformed together, and living abundant lives. So yesterday we had a walk. Hallelujah, everybody who came to walk. Buenas